Hello and welcome to Panty the Geeks. You join us this week for the unboxing of the uh, the Knight Velixio. Was that how you spell that? Vexilo. 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 Okay. Velour. And the Knight Velour and the Knight <laughs> Heraldor. Yeah, you can't really change that one. Heraldor. It does sound like some sort of elf from Lord of the Rings. Right, so we've got these two new models. We've got basically a standard bearer and a musician. That's what we've got. So this guy can bring walls down with his music, and this guy can bring lightning bolts or comets down with his banner. Great. Yay. So let's uh, let's start with this dude, shall we? Okay. Trumpet dude. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna open these up, and we'll put them together as normal. Um, let me uh, use my crafting knife. Oh, you've had to me uh, yeah. all the time because it takes ages. Well, it's, it's sat next to me for once, crafting now. I've actually, for some reason, it's prepared. There we go. Dink. And we have that, and we have the screw. I'm going to open the camera now. And there we go, that's the basic sprue. So on there we've got the body and everything. So this should be pretty straightforward to put together. Instructions are on the inside there. Ouch. So when you've cut that with a knife, it'll be sharp. Um, and they're in order again, so it's just this should be pretty straightforward to put together. Um, so we'll start with the base and we'll get these bits off the sprue. Okay, so uh, step one is to put this part, which is the front part of the body, and this part, which is the back part of the body, and most of the trumpet together. Those two bits go together. So let's do that. Okay, so there we go. So the next thing is to put part three on, which is the leg, which is this bit. That bit goes in there, as usual. A dry fit it in if it is, and then I can't get it on. So like that. Okay. Next up uh, is most of the parts really. We've got uh, the head, which is part 9. We've got the cloak and this arm part, which is part 4, which is the bit that goes on next. And then we have the greave, is it? Yeah. Here we go. So those bits go on next. So uh, let's go wait for that to dry and then we'll put those bits on. Okay. There we go, so this is where we're at, pretty much together. Last bits are just to put the other shoulder pad on, which is to part 7. Put the front part of the trumpet on, or the other side, which is part 8. And then we have the uh, sword, which he's holding on to, like that, um, which is part 6. And all those parts will go on, and then we'll stick it onto the base. So we're back with you when I've done that. Okay, so here we go. There he is. The army sword. Quite a cool model actually. It is actually, it's quite dynamic. For that to dry. It's not quite dry in the base. So we'll come back to that when we've done the other model. Just give it time to dry and put it into place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's quite a nice model really. It um, is. It's just born a trumpet light, which is basically a last cannon. Um, but there we go. It's, 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 I still quite like it to be fair. Yeah. And then we have the knight, Blixir. So let's uh, do the same. We'll open this. We'll see if I can stab myself or something. Let's play with the knife again. Yeah, that's what I'd be easy to get the screws out. There we go. And I want to the instructions, which I'll let you get out while I'll show people the screws. So here we are. This is screw number one with the two different banner heads on. So they're attached via just this little bit here. You could potentially chop that part off on both of them, put a magnet on if you wanted to have them interchangeable. 
I don't think I will do on this, I'll just pick one of them. I might have a quick read and decide uh, which stands I'm going to use. Because they both look pretty cool actually. I was going to just go for like the icon, but the banner actually looks pretty nice. It does look, look nice actually, I do like And that. I like this bit, it reminds me of the wizard staff top. <laughs> sort of bit, you know, from Warhammer. Yeah. I like the way it's sort of like, and then you've got this like... Oh, that one over there that you've got there. Yeah, the yeah. one that's just off camera. Uh, which isn't painted, so I'm not going to put it on camera. Also, uh, would fit in well with the Oculus. Yeah, it looks nice. Mm. I am I'm generally stumped now. I was going to, I was just going to automatically use this one, but I like that one as well. That's cool. And then we have the other sprue, which has got the body parts on, etc. So we will start by putting parts one and three together. Okay, so we have part one, which is the legs. And the back part of the body. We have part two, which is the f uh, sorry part two, which is a bit of rock, rock which uh, goes on the other side of that bit, which is stood on. And then we have part three, which is the front part of the body. There it is. So we get those bits together, and then we put it onto the base. So we're back when I've done that. Okay. So here we are. And next up we have the head, which is part four. We have uh, part six, which is the right arm. And part five, which is the left arm. So those bits need to go on. So we'll put them on and see if there's any problems. Okay, so here we are. So it's kind of the position we want the arms to be in. If we're putting part ten on in a second. Before that, we need to put part seven which is the other shoulder pad and part 8 which is the hammer this goes onto his back and the hammer just goes into a little slot there a bit like some of the other eternal stuff this is like the part of the belt so I'm going to put those bits on and then we're actually going to go straight onto part 10 which is this bit here so you see that's got two hands on which is why you want these in this position and that will go on there and then the back part, which is part 9, will go on there. So I'm going to do those two stages and I'll be back with you. Okay, so here we are. This is where we're up to. So the last thing to do is attach the top of the banner, which is the choice between this really cool one here or this really cool one here. And there we go, see a bit of a close up there. Uh, it's, it's actually really difficult to choose. I've been reading the rules just to try and give me some sort of idea of which one I like the best. So this one will be the Meteoric Standard and this one will be the Pennant of the Stormbringer. Which both sound cool. Um, so this one drops a Comet on your enemies. It's a one use only and it's a random range between 2 and 12 inches. So. And, but everything it does hit takes D3 mortal wounds, but so it's one use only. This um, basically you choose one of your Stormcast Eternal units and you basically re redeploy it. So it's basically like giving a second deep strike and you can deploy it within three inches of an enemy. So you should be in range to attack. You can't move after you've done it with that unit, but as I said, you should be in range to attack. But um, any unit within 6 inches gets buffed by the hurricane and is on a 4 plus, so 50% chance will take D3 mortal wounds just like the comet. So it's a difficult choice because they're both very cool, but I think for tactical reasons and the fact I can teleport a unit somewhere I want and could possibly win the game if it was objective based, I think the pennant. Because I can't choose based on looks. Normally that's what I do. Whichever one looks the best, I'll pick regardless of the rules. But I like them both equally. Because that does look awesome. But this banner does look awesome. Um, so, and as I said, you could potentially magnetise it. If you cut that bit off there, and cut that bit off there, you could magnetise it. If you had some small magnets, and you could swap between them. But, in this case, I'm going to pick one. And I'm going to pick this one, the Stormbringer. So that's the last thing to do is just to stick that on and it should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go on that and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so here we are with the two models side by side. 
I'm actually very impressed by both of them actually. I, I was not very impressed by the picture of this one. But on, on reflection it does look pretty cool and I can see him I can see how cool he actually is now. I do like him. But I'm, I am very impressed by the banner. As I said, it was a difficult choice, but I still like the idea of that one. Because I always think banners and people waving them rather than icons. Mm. You know, like when you see like uh, the, the monuments where they've got soldiers around a banner. Yeah. It's always like flapping in the wind and I was like holding it up and yeah. it's really good. And I, I just see that there, like him stood in the centre of a defence and everyone around him and people the being wind hit. Bl blowing this banner. And, and being hit by the banner in the face because they've got a bit too close. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I've made the right choice there. Even though the icon does look really cool. It does look cool. You could probably use again. it for something else. Probably will do. I'll probably keep hold of that. Some sort of scenery or scenery. something. Yeah. Stick it on some sort of like building or something. Mm. The old Warhammer fortress. Pretend it's a... Uh, a Sigma right. A Sigma right fortress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there we go. So that's this week's video. It's a short one because mm. it's just two models. Um, and next week I think it's just two models again. The Chaos Tomb is out, but whether my friend will be buying that or not, I don't know, because he was a bit disappointed by the last one, which if you've seen the video, uh, we were as well. A bit yeah. controversial, but there we go. That's just how we feel about it. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. Oh, definitely, yeah. It was just um, our views. Yep. Yeah. So um, keep an eye out for that. Maybe he'll get it and maybe we'll be able to borrow it, um, or maybe not. But Claire definitely is going to be getting the models for herself. I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I like the uh, look of the Slaughter Priest. Slaughter Priest. Yeah. Uh, is he the guy that looks like he should be in Mad Max? Because he looks amazing. Yeah, he, he, like I say, he just reminds me of Dalsim from yeah. Street Fighter. going to move these guys back. We'll have a look at the uh, wide wolf, actually. Got it here. Yeah. So this dude. That guy. That yeah. dude. I think it's because of his. I see what you mean with Dalsim. Yeah. It's kind of it's... That armoured Dalsim with a huge axe. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this guy's so cool. I saw him, I just thought, yeah. normal chaos guy, but he's wielding an anvil, which is awesome. That's flaming very, anvil. Yeah, it's very much like the uh, blood letter and the um, warmongers. Is it yeah. warmongers with the trials? But this dude, I just if he if he looks if good as he looks in the picture, mm. he just he's just different, stylized to most things. And the games workshop doing at the moment. Let's just get the camera. In. Mm. Oops, a bit close. Yeah, it is. Mm. Away. There we go. So if you've not got white dwarf, yeah, here you go. Um, but the sort of priest, he looks a lot taller than a normal guy. I was going to say that, he, he looks taller and, and slimmer. He just looks like he's from Mad Max. Yeah. I've just been playing the video game for Mad Max and it's amazing. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. And this guy just reminds me as always from that. So I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. I think the detail on his back, if there's some other pictures, he's got like chains growing out of him. Whoa, weird. Yeah, that bit is like um, bone or yeah. a horn or something. It looks like it's growing into him. So here's the skull grinder under the side. He looks great. Anvil wielding maniac. Um, I do actually like him more every time I see him. It's just that sort of like stance that he's in. He's about to whack someone with an anvil. So yeah, nice. So <laughs> hopefully we'll see these two next week. I don't think there's any reason why we won't. Uh, as I said, the, the, we might not be getting the battle tomb. It depends on when my friend gets it or not, whether we'll be able to steal it off him. Mm. He's usually quite... Um, protective. Protective. He's usually quite accommodating, actually. He wonders a lot. Stuff. He does. He does. But um, there we go. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let's put the model back. Mm -hmm. See him from the top now. And um, there we go. And he's just going to deafen him by blowing in his ear. <laughs> you never need to get your ears shringed again. <laughs> Where is the enemy? Oh, right. Yeah, so that's great. I said yeah. it's a short video, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you'll join us again next week. Please like and subscribe. It helps out loads if you do. And uh, we'll see you again soon. So take care, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.